Hi, today I want to talk about The Shining, which is a movie that was based off a Stephen King novel. It was directed and produced by Stanley Kubrick. Fun fact, Stephen King and Stanley Kubrick did not like each other, so I'm going to touch on that. And if you haven't seen the movie, don't worry, this will still be entertaining because I'm talking mostly about behind the scenes stuff, so you don't really need to have seen the movie to enjoy it. But if you have seen the movie, you probably recognize what I'm wearing. It's Shelley Duvall's character, Wendy's, costume in the movie. Whoa. A poor rendition of it, but this is just what I have. But speaking of Shelley Duvall, I do want to speak about her mistreatment, how Stanley Kubrick mistreated her, and actually how that affected her the rest of her life. So let's get into it. The movie The Shining was based off a Stephen King novel and it was directed and produced by Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick and Stephen King did not like each other. Stephen King wrote a screenplay for The Shining and Stanley Kubrick didn't even read it because he said it was unworthy. He also called King's writing weak. Stephen King was disappointed in Kubrick's adaptation of his book. He said it fell flat. He also did not approve of the casting. Jack Nicholson had just done One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, so he was worried that the public would perceive him as loony right off the bat when the character it was supposed to be about their descent into madness. He thought how Wendy was perceived was a screaming dish rag and very misogynistic. He wanted Jessica Lange to play that part. The character he wrote was much stronger in the book. I used to describe The Shining, the film, as something like a beautiful car that had no engine in it. The Timberline Lodge, where they filmed a lot of the exterior shots, actually made a change to the film. In the book, the spooky stuff happened in room 217, but they wanted to change it to a room number they didn't have so it wouldn't scare potential customers away from renting rooms there, so it switched to 237. Danny Lloyd was only five years old when they were filming, and he didn't even know it was a horror film. They told him it was a drama in order to protect him. In one intense scene, they actually had Shelley Duvall carry a dummy instead of Danny in order to protect him. He saw the film for the first time when he was 16 and he said it wasn't scary to him because he knew too much about behind the scenes. The director of Toy Story 3, Lee Unkrich, is actually a huge fan of The Shining and he put Easter eggs from The Shining in Toy Story 3. In one scene, you can see the carpet has the same pattern as The Shining. And in another scene, you can see the license plate says room 237 in Toy Story 3, which is the spooky room in The Shining. Stanley Kubrick's excessive ways during the filming of The Shining affected everybody on set. He would constantly change the script to the point where Jack Nicholson stopped learning his lines until just a few minutes before filming because there wasn't any point. Stanley Kubrick actually edited the movie after it was released to theaters. Kubrick was excessive with the amount of takes he would do to get the shot he wanted. He also notoriously mistreated Shelley Duvall in order to get her to act the way he wanted. He was actually buddy-buddy with Jack Nicholson and then treated Shelley Duvall the complete opposite. Nicholson talking about Shelley Duvall is quoted as saying, it's one of the most difficult roles he'd ever seen an actor take on. The mind games that Kubrick played on Shelley during this 13 month period ended up affecting her the rest of her life and even today. Before I talk about the mistreatment of Shelley, let's do a quick recap. She filmed for 13 months. She was completely isolated. She had just gone through a breakup. She was away from her family. She's overseas while she's filming. So it's, she doesn't even have friends around her. And then she's being systematically mistreated. Stanley Kubrick wanted to break her, so he told the rest of the cast and crew not to speak to her, not to compliment her, not to say anything positive to her, to ignore her. He constantly told her, you are wasting everybody's time. If she gave any suggestion, he would shoot it down. He wanted her to feel like garbage. He wanted her crying to be authentic. She became physically ill from this and actually started losing clumps of hair, which he downplayed. Well, I don't sympathize with Shelley. It doesn't help. So on top of being mistreated intentionally, think about what kind of effect it would have on you for 13 months, 12 hour days, five to six days a week, where you're acting in terror crying and screaming every day for 12 hours and then on top of that 
you're completely isolated by cast and crew. Well, that's what Shelley went through. Another one of Kubrick's power tactics were to cut her lines without giving her any warning. Also, she would blindly go into scenes. For instance, the scene where she has this bat, she's not told anything the other person's going to do because he wants her to be acting in terror. This famous scene, also, she was not told anything. So as it's happening, this is the first time she knows what's gonna happen. Kubrick had her do so many takes with the scene with the bat that when it was all done, she had raw, bloody hands. What Shelley experienced during The Shining pretty much affected her the rest of her life and even to today. And she kind of dropped off. Then in 2016, she made an appearance on Dr. Phil. This was her first appearance in 10 years. I need help. Well, that's why I'm here. All new Dr. Phil. I love Robin Williams. I don't think he's dead. Where do you think he is? Shape shift. Shelley's appearance on Dr. Phil upset a lot of people in the public who cared about her. They felt like Dr. Phil was clearly exploiting her mental illness. It was called an utterly heartless form of entertainment. People said, you're putting Shelley on display while she's suffering. Dr. Phil did try to get her help, but she ended up refusing it. The last I could find on Shelley was that the Actors Fund of America tried to help her and that was all I could find. I don't know if they ended up helping her or not. Look at this. Pulled all my hair. I pulled hunks of hair out on the windowsill. And the back got cut. Major trim. Like hunks of hair. Oh, look. Okay. It just comes okay, out. Okay, right now, fellas. Yeah. You're right, sir. There's more to come, Shell. Come on. Come on. No, oh, my dear. shut up anyway now, boys. Yeah, come on, Shell. Get the dummy. No, she doesn't carry him. That's right. Okay, let's go. Can I have the finder, please? The 18th. Mm -hmm. 18 in the tube. Swing it all back in here. Yeah, it's got to go outside. There was time. Um, it's 25 to 1. Oh, I don't sympathize with Shelly. It doesn't help you, wouldn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. Yes, I know. Let's go. Right, okay. 18. Uh, Boys, want the video was going to be around here. Get this all set up. From May until October, I was really in and out of ill health because the stress of the role was so great and the, the stress of being away from home, just uprooted and moved somewhere else. And I had just gotten out of a relationship. And um, so for me, it was just tumultuous. Need help. I'm very sick. I need help. Well, that's why I'm here. All new Dr. Phil. I loved Robin Williams. I don't think he's dead. Where do you think he is? Shape-shifting. Do you see him? Half, yes. Her unusual beliefs. The man who's threatening me is the sheriff of Nottingham. I think there's a worrying disc inside me. <laughs> real difference between my take on it and Stanley Kubrick's take on it was this. In my novel, The Hotel Burns. In Kubrick's movie, The Hotel Freezes. It's a difference between warmth and cold. But the images are striking. There's no doubt about it. I mean, Jack Nicholson's face in the doorway, his bearded, crazy, grinning face. He says, here's Johnny which was his ad lib, and it became, you know, part of the movie. So the images are striking, but to me that's surface, it's not substance. So I used to describe The Shining, the film, as something like a beautiful car that had no engine in it.